goes along with your not accepting the idea that uh, scientific truth can be equated with what survives in the long run of scientific inquiry. Right. It goes along with that quite. Right. But now, you've said you're hemmed in by your naturalism, but I want to give your naturalism a little more play here. Um, uh, expanding on what you just said, uh, you imagine that, in principle, there might be telepathy or we might see into the future. But of course, there's one thing that we already do which sets us apart from all the other animals, and that is we talk to each other and we read books. So the examples that are often trotted out by these exponents of cognitive closure, you know, you, you, know, you can't get an ant to understand democracy or a bird to understand quantum physics. It's just not, their little brains just aren't up to it. Um, those are little naked animal brains that are not in communication with other brains. Our brains are in communication with other brains, and so we, we get a tremendous leg up from being part of a culture. Uh, it seems to me that uh, much more realistic than your imagination about telepathy uh, is the, sh the sharing that already sets our brains just on a different scale from the brains of of the other natural creatures who do indeed show these cognitive limitations. Oh, yes, yes. Well, I like that. Uh, I like that. Uh, this is the, uh, if we uh, think back to the, uh, to, to, to the time of the, uh, uh, when the apes were as far as uh, our uh, line had progressed, uh, what we have now in the way of uh, communication uh, is as fanciful and magic as, uh, uh, from a present point of view, telepathy is. And I think this makes this uh, uh, con imaginative concession all the more, all the more uh, uh, vivid and, uh, and serious. Um, a great deal of your time, especially at the beginning of your career in the 30s and 40s, um, was spent on logic. Uh, could you tell us if you see some relationship between your philosophical ideas about language and science and this more technical mathematical work. Yes, uh, uh, it was a uh, it, it was certainly a, 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 a philosophical drive in the first place that made me so enthusiastic about mathematical logic. Uh, I I had had a, a already a taste for mathematics, which was a, 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 a an essential component here. Uh, but uh, the idea of getting to the bottom of what uh, numbers are and all the rest and all this uh, uh, systematization in terms finally, really as it, uh, it developed in later years, uh, 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 reduction to a single predicate plus elementary logic, single predicate of class membership does the whole trick, all of mathematics. Um, and uh, um, so that was a philosophical drive in itself, but uh, uh, but. Uh, one limited uh, 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 sort of philosophical question. Another uh, link is the, the, the great difference, it seems to me, uh, uh, mathematical logic made, even a, a mathematical logic at its elementary level, uh, in the, the precision, formulation, clarifying, clarifying questions, systematizing, uh, sort of thing that, uh, well, I think there's a very instructive, uh, impressive uh, exercise in this in J. H. Woodger's uh, rather neglected axiomatic method in biology in which he uh, takes a bio basic biological uh, predicate or two and applies the Principia Mathematica kind of uh, uh, construction to the rest of biology, or a good deal of it. Um, uh, and uh, um, so this is clarifying the philosophically attractive uh, 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 analyses and reductions. And I think, well, to me also, uh, reduction a philosophical reduction is attractive. I like it as far as it'll go. And uh, when I uh, 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 when I uh, deplored it uh, in uh, um, two dogmas, I was deploring what I took to be an excess of it, and a, 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 an ir irresponsible uh, uh, extension of it. So uh, that would be the link with philosophy, I guess, that I see. Do you think that? The development of logic and work in foundations of mathematics uh, has contributed to the progress of uh, science, physics, for example, um, say quantum mechanics or relativity. And if not, um, 
can logic really be regarded as a department of rational inquiry, according to your naturalism? Oh, yes, good. Uh, well, uh, uh, it, hasn't con it hasn't contributed, uh, as far as I know, to those studies, uh, which I think is partly a, uh, uh, a reflection on the quantum physicists and the others. Uh, uh, and uh, I, in fact, I hope, I hope for the better. I've been uh, uh, delighted to see in uh, fairly recent years uh, graduate students, uh, uh, a number of them, in philosophy, uh, going over in the uh, physics department, uh, taking seminars, getting really seriously into quantum mechanics, uh, uh, and uh, 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 and there are these 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 really baffling puzzles in quantum mechanics, which I uh, keep hoping that can be cleared up, and possibly uh, partly with the help of highly trained physicists with a more philosophical uh, bent and 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 training. I think a wonderful irony. Back in the days, uh, the latter uh, latter part of the 19th century, and. Uh, uh, a good chunk of this century, uh, old-fashioned, hidebound mathematicians were uh, inclined to scoff about the uh, the uh, rigor, the the uh, the uh, pedantry uh, of uh, uh, formalization. Uh, and after all, they know what they're doing. For heaven's sake, let's go on. Let's make discoveries. Formalize, formalize. Frege, the kind of thing that Frege uh, really brought into full full uh, existence. Uh, and then what happens, uh, uh, Alan Turing comes along and founds computer theory. Uh, and uh, uh, logic is the, uh, was, was the turning point, the basis. It was uh, 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 the, 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 the basic uh, sort of principle of computer theory in Turing's so-called, what, what other people than Turing have called Turing machines, uh, uh, the, the uh, most elementary computer. That, at the same time, was Turing's... Uh, uh, a solution to a uh, basic problem in foundations of pure mathematics, uh, uh, namely uh, the question of uh, the possibility of a uh, mechanical uh, decision procedure as between decision between truth and falsity for for logical formulas. Uh, uh, the same thing, uh, and uh, and then on top of that, besides mathematical logic being at the really the birth of uh, uh, computer theory and its really serious form. Also, it is the continuing mathematical logic in its elementary form, uh, handmaiden, uh, because it's what goes into programming. Uh, and so from having been the, uh, uh, this uh, uh, trivial sort of uh, stamp collecting uh, 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 offshoot of uh, serious mathematics uh, for uh, the pedants and uh, uh, playboys, uh, it becomes uh, uh, vital to vital to the highest tech. Professor Kwan, I'd like to take you to a topic that you cover very little in your uh, work. In fact, it could be said that you have notoriously avoided the area. Um, and this is the area of uh, moral and political philosophy. Um, there are very, very few writings uh, that I know of that you've, you've made any direct pronouncement on moral or ethical issues, but one, on the nature of moral values, you set out a naturalistic account, I believe, of how you see uh, moral where, where moral philosophy might, might have a basis. Could you sort of take us through that? Uh, well, uh, the, the way I see it, there's uh, uh, the, the great difference between moral judgments and uh, uh, judgments about the uh, uh, the world, the facts of the world, uh, is that uh, uh, we have this, uh, uh, the, the, these checkpoints in uh, um, experimental observation where it's up to nature and not us uh, and not our own concepts to see whether it comes out right. Uh, and uh, 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 and uh, as I see it, there's no analog to that uh, in, uh, in ethics and morality. Uh, and our our, uh, our moral judgments, uh, I, as I see it, are, are, are laid down by, uh, by society, by uh, early childhood training, partly also, uh, quite possibly, uh, oh, surely, in fact, uh, by natural selection. I think of altruism, uh, which we also find in other animals. Uh, and uh, uh, so, so we, we have these, these endowments and uh, uh, these scruples, and they have their survival value in the survival of our society, our species, in a way. 
Uh, then what does that leave for, uh, for philosophy? Uh, our, as, because of the increasing complexity of society uh, uh, over uh, down the, the ages, uh, uh, we, we get moral conflicts within the individual even, uh, where things get sorted, uh, uh, have, to, have to get sorted out on the one hand, uh, it seems uh, uh, desirable to do this, on the other hand it seems uh, uh, somehow uh, evil. Uh, and uh, uh, so we try to systematize, uh, 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 and one can try uh, pushing it farther and farther, uh, systematize our uh, intuitive, our inherited, our uh, un uh, unconsciously assimilated values, try to articulate them, uh, and systematize them into a, 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 a minimum uh, uh, of, of first principles uh, from which the rest could be derived. And this, uh, I, I don't know, know how much could be hoped for in this, uh, sort of, which of course has been, uh, uh, has been attempted, uh, Kant for one. Uh, but uh, anyway, I see that as a, a legitimate sort of question, a meaningful question from a naturalistic point of view. Mm. And, uh, uh, and, and I don't see this point of view as uh, somehow uh, unbounded un, uh, 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 permissiveness. Uh, uh, we, uh, for a long, uh, long way, we can depend on other people having the same pretty basic moral values that we do. Um, uh, because of the same re same heritage, same ge genes, uh, in large part, uh, uh, and uh, our uh, moral arguments for them will be rather uh, techn technological arguments in terms of cause and effect. If you do this, this other things have to happen, and after all, that's not desirable. Oh, you're right. Uh, so you're changing their view of what would be the moral move on the basis of uh, science, scientific uh, uh, knowledge. Uh, Maybe very very. Uh, rudimentary uh, common sense science, but it's on the scientific side of things, the cognitive side. Uh, and uh, uh, it's just with uh, the really depraved that you get down to the point where there's just no common basis at all. And that doesn't mean then, okay, uh, uh, let them go their way. No, that's dangerous. Uh, think of the Holocaust and all that. Uh, you come to the point where your values are ultimate and you've got to fight for them. And, uh, and I think that's, uh, uh, that, that remains without any, any sort of uh, rationalization in terms of, uh, of divine sanction or anything else. But how do, you, how do you actually arrive at that bedrock? I mean, what procedure do you use to arrive at? Uh, dialectic. A, a dialectic procedure? Uh, d uh, yes, well, I mean, uh, yes, arguing, reasoning, the cause and effect. If you do this, such and such will happen. Uh, and. Uh, Try to show them the consequences, get them to consider the, the further ramifications of the, of the act that they're uh, contemplating, uh, and uh, uh, make a better, better, well, do a better job of cost accounting. But what would you say to someone like, for example, Morton White in his paper, um, which he writes, where he, his plea to you was that since human beings are what they are, and they have things like aesthetic appreciation, they have things like um, a feeling of that they should or shouldn't do the right thing, that there should be an ought in the matter, and, and, and so on. And he suggests that you accord the same epis epistemic status, normative status, to what he sees as that important part of a human being in the same way as you accord uh, to uh, 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 science principles. I want to bring this back a bit. In, uh, on the nature of moral values, you said that uh, the best that you can get for uh, problems of uh, uh, morals, the best that you can get in morality is a coherence theory, but in uh, si questions of science, there is more of a correspondence. Yeah? And it would seem to me to indicate that there is a fundamental difference somehow between epistemic norms on the one hand and uh, value norms, on the other hand, which you've, which you've explained. But how do you arrive at that? Uh, well, it's, uh, it, it's, the, uh, uh, it's the absence of uh, uh, experimental checkpoints, uh, where, where you're leaving it to nature to decide that come out right or not. Uh, uh, in uh, the case of moral values, uh, your checkpoint is, again, against your own 
uh, intuitions. And the analog to the, uh, uh, on the scientific side to that would be uh, checking uh, against your more general uh, scientific beliefs, but uh, 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 stopping short still of the uh, uh, observation sentences, which are the ultimate checkpoints, and which uh, can't be uh, duplicated on the on the other side. And that's, uh, th that that I see as the difference. And the sort of the, the um, evolutionary or the teleological part of the story would be that you would just not do an action because that was naturally selected for. It was, it was, you would be doing your species wrong by performing, say, gratuitous murder or whatever the case may be. That would be something that would explain perhaps how, before you can even verbalize the notion, that that particular action or that particular activity is wrong, before you can verbalize that, you may even have an instinctive, an intuitive reaction to know that that is wrong. That's right. It would be instinctive, intuitive. It would be, uh, but, uh, uh, when it becomes verbalized, then it's a, uh, 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 this would be, uh, be an appeal to natural, natural selection and would be on the scientific side, yeah. namely the cause of people's behavior.